Hello Paleons and welcome back to my channel. Update 0.178 has brought with it blossoming flowers and today I'm going to run through with you everything you need to know about these gorgeous blooms and of course some tips and tricks for getting your hands on them and how to use them. If you want more paleo content don't forget to like and subscribe but let's get to the gardening. So first off, I wanted to explain how you get your hands on the flower seeds because there are a few different ways to do that. Every bug in Kilimat has the chance to drop seeds when caught. For this, you will need to collect the loot from the bug and the game will notify you on the right hand side if you've been lucky enough to pick up a seed and what kind. It will obviously also appear in your inventory. All seed types seem to be dependent on the bug or insect you have caught. So by this, I mean if you catch a certain bug, they will drop a certain seed. They're kind of intertwined. Initially, the dev team said that it would only be bugs in Kilima that could drop seeds. However, there is a crossover of bug types between Kilima and Bahari. So some bugs that are found on both maps also have the chance to drop seeds irrespective of where you are in the world. So you could be catching a blue common butterfly in Bahari and you could still get the seed. I will run over what bugs drop what seeds in a moment but it's not clear if this was intentional at the moment or whether it is a bug that needs to be fixed. I really hope it was intentional. The second way to get seeds is from Orni's Metal Store. The store is unlocked after hitting bug catching level 10 and to purchase from Orni you are required to play with medals which if you aren't aware you obtain through leveling up your skill and also by completing weekly achievements. I would suggest that this is probably not the preferred way to obtain seeds as I would rather save my medals for other things in the store but if you really want to get your hands on those flowers I 100% understand. Another way to get your hands on more seeds is to request them from your friends. This will work using the normal request method, obviously those limits apply. You will need to have previously obtained the flower seed to request more, but if your friends happen to have lots of one particular kind of seed and they're happy to share with you, then it's a great way to boost your flower numbers on your plot because I want loads, so I'm sure you all do too. And finally, you are also able to collect more flower seeds from fully grown flowers. I'll run over the growth stages in just a moment, but you are only able to do this once. So just bear that in mind. But it is a great way to build up your flower storage and your seed storage. So definitely, definitely worth watering those flowers and getting them sorted. So now you've got your seeds, what do you do with them? Well, the next part is pretty straightforward. You just need to head on over to your plot and place them down anywhere you like. Flowers are not grown on farming plots, which means you do not have to worry about that. And when first placed, it will have a sprout-like appearance. To get them to grow, you must water them. And then after a period of time has passed, you will get another option to water them again. And eventually you will be able to obtain seeds from them. And after that, they are fully grown and hopefully they will just look picture perfect on your plot. I haven't figured out the exact timing for the growth as of yet. It doesn't appear to be tied to the 6am growth like your farming is, but it does happen very, very quickly, which I'm super happy about. So there is zero delays in getting those blossoming flowers. Next up, I want to run through how to get all the different varieties of flowers. As of today, there are three flowers that are not yet in the game that were previously advertised. And these are the cotton ball flower, the pink hydrangea and the mixed hydrangea. Hopefully when these eventually are added, I will add a pinned comment on how to get them. But for now, here are all the available flowers and the relevant bugs that drop them. First off, we have the anemone, which is dropped from the garden mantis. But if you want to buy it, it costs 10 medals from Orni's shop. The chapatails are dropped from the brush tail with dragonfly and they cost 7 medals. The forsythia is dropped from the spotted stink bug and they cost 10. The gardenia is dropped from the common blue butterfly and this costs 15 medals. These bugs are so common so please don't spend your medals on them. Go and find them, there is loads around the world. The grimlikin is dropped from the common field cricket and that also costs 10. The blue hydrangea is dropped from the dusk wing butterfly and this costs 15 medals. I will say that that is quite a rare bug, um, it's very rare that I ever see that. So if you do want to pay for it, it is 15 medals, which is a little steep, but it was going to be worth it, I promise. They are beautiful. The lavender is dropped from the garden millipede and that costs 10 medals. The roses are dropped from Killerman night moths and that also costs 10. 
The Tiger Lily is dropped from the Proudhorn Stag Beetle and that costs 7 medals. It does feel like the medals is in correspondence with the size because the Tiger Lilies are quite small. The Tulips are dropped from the Garden Leaf Hopper and they cost 10 medals. I promise you I'm almost done talking about flowers but I do just have a few more tips, tricks and just general things you should know about the flowers and how to get them before we go. Firstly, once you have grown the flowers freely, you can pick them up and even put them in your inventory. However, there is currently a little bug that I have experienced when I tried to add the fully grown flowers to my storage chest as I was unable to remove them. So I definitely don't recommend putting them in your storage chest for now. Once they're in your inventory, you can obviously move between your plot. So if you do want to move flowers to a different plot, do it that way. Don't put them in your storage. Seeds, however, can be stored fine and they will appear in the gatherables section of your storage chest. Placement of the flowers works very much like furniture and you can really squeeze in lots of different flowers all very close together. So make sure you are creating bountiful, cluttered gardens. I'm trying to think of all the adjectives here, but yes, put them all in together nicely and it will work wonderfully. They will look gorgeous. The flowers are separate from furniture plot limit, however there is a limit of a thousand flowers per plot. If you get a thousand flowers I'll be very proud of you, am I going to try doing that? 100% yes. If you find yourself struggling to get hold of flower seeds, do not forget about the special bug catching additions you can have. The honey laws are a great way to get lots of bug quickly. If you do decide to go down this route, don't forget to try different areas of Kilima at different times of the day to ensure you're not just catching the same bug over and over. The recipe for honey laws unlock at bug catching level 7 and give me purchase from Orni for 2000 gold. You can also purchase them from the guild store for 75 bug catching medals after reaching level 10, which is a little bit steep, so maybe think about that wisely. I would also say that if you're going to use a honey lore, it's only polite, I think, to kind of shout it out to the rest of the map because everyone is going to be going crazy wanting to get those seeds at the moment. So it's just a nice thing to do if you're feeling generous, that is. Additionally, if you're struggling to locate a rare bug, don't forget about the Buzzy Jar. The recipe unlocks at level 8 and can be purchased from Orni for 2,500 gold. When activated, the jar tracks rare bugs for 15 minutes. They will show on your map and also on the top compass. So if there's a particular bug that you're trying to so hard to find and you want that one flower definitely recommend using this and don't forget to also check the times of the day in which that particular bug will appear because they do vary and it does vary depending on where you are on the map as well like i said with the honey laws and finally if you have difficulties catching bugs maybe they run off too quickly then don't forget about the smoke candle when you have this active it emits a soothing smoke that prevents you from alerting bugs for 10 minutes they're quite easy to craft and it would definitely make things just that little bit easier i don't know if maybe you're struggling a bit on the switch but this does work wonderfully Overall, I think the flowers are a great addition to the game. Not only are they absolutely stunning and I cannot wait to see all of the beautiful gardens that people create, they also act as a great incentive for people to do bug catching because it was definitely one of the skills that I ignored a little bit. Okay, quite a lot. I ignored it a lot. Let me know in the comments what your favourite flower variation is. I think mine is definitely the gardenia. I love the bushy appearance of it. It just looks so full and it's going to be great for filling out areas on my plot. Cannot wait to add that in. So that's it. Have a great rest of your day. I really hope this was helpful. If you have any more tips, feel free to share them in the comments. Have happy gardening, growing those flowers. Bye bye.